All right, everybody, welcome to our first mini review session. Today I'm going to be covering some of the experiments that we've covered in topics 21. Okay, so this is going over the experiments that lead us into the secretory pathway. The first experiment that we went through in detail was the pulse chase experiment. Okay? Now remember, the pulse chase experiment, the point of this experiment was to show a brief overview of the secretory pathway. That is, that there are certain proteins that are made in the cell that are destined to go through secretion. And in order to go through secretion, they have to have the signal sequence at their end terminus, which is recognized by the SRP as it's being translated out in the cytoplasm, which then brings it to the ER. Once in the ER, folding begins. There's modification and processing, which we'll go through later on in the next couple review sessions. Then it goes to the Golgi, and then finally to the secretory granules. Now, the secretory granules are vesicles that are budding off the trans-Golgi network and can go in three directions. Either regulated secretion, where the proteins are packaged into vesicles and condensed and do not get released or fused with the plasma membrane of the cell until that cell receives an external signal. The second is that they leave the trans network, go through the constitutive pathway, where they immediately, without hesitation, fuse with the plasma membrane and get released. And the third one is the lysosomal enzymes. So those are, again, leaving the trans network with clathrin-coated vesicles and fusing to the late endosome and then deliver to the lysosome where they function. But again, this was the very first experiment uh, about the secretory pathway and it simply illustrated that certain proteins go again, start being translated out in the cytoplasm, make their way to the ER, the Golgi, and then secretion. So with the pulse chase experiment, what they did is that they picked a particular cell type that they knew produced enzymes or proteins that only got secreted. So they decided to use pancreatic cells. Pancreas cells produce digestive enzymes which have to be secreted into the intestines or into the stomach. So naturally they knew that all proteins that are made in the pancreas get secreted. With that in mind that meant that they could pick any amino acid that they wanted, label it somehow, and then track that amino acid as it got put into a protein and then follow that path of the protein from uh, translation all the way to secretion and that is exactly what they did so with the pulse chase experiment again they chose to use pancreatic cells which made some type of digestive enzyme they chose to tag the amino acid leucine over here so back in those days in order to tag a protein so this was the time before GFP they would tag the amino acid with a radioactive isotope so that's what's represented here with the H3 uh, leucine here. So that is a radioactive labeled leucine that they could actually visualize then through autoradiography, an old school method where you use film to capture your image. Again, a lot of you don't remember those days. Okay? So that's what these images are showing then. So these images here from the pulse chase experiment demonstrate proteins being made and then going into the ER at three minutes. A few minutes later, at seven minutes, they end up in the Golgi, or secretory vesicles bound for the Golgi. And then finally from the Golgi, they're packaged into secretory vesicles, or granules, here at the 37 minute mark. So they're condensed and packaged. And then they get secreted, so these secretory granules that have left the trans-Golgi network get sorted and then end up fusing to the plasma membrane and eventually secreting the enzyme out to the apical membrane of the cell or out into the lumen of the gut. In this case, the pancreas secretes the enzyme into the intestine, for example. So again, in order to do this experiment, they chose leucine because they know that all leucines are going to get assembled into this digestive enzyme. Now it's known as pulse chase because the pulse is the radioactive labeled leucine 
that you can actually follow and track. Okay? The chase is where they then flooded the cell with non-labeled leucine. Okay? So again, you're only able to visualize the leucines that are actually tagged. So as, for example, if you look at the image, if you can see the protein at three minutes because it's radioactively labeled, you can see that the protein with the radioactively labeled leucine is in the ER, then the non-labeled leucine that you put behind it to chase the, the radioactively labeled leucine must be still out in the cytoplasm just being assembled into the protein or going through translation. Then at the seven minute mark, where again you're only visualizing the radioactively labeled leucine, you see it in the uh, Golgi apparatus, then that must mean that the non-labeled leucine, which is right behind it, is in the ER. So basically the chase is non-labeled leucine that is literally chasing the pulsed or the labeled amino acids. And again, this autoradiography was a way to pick up on the radioactive labeled leucines. Okay? So that's what's happening. And again, in the end, this basically demonstrated a couple of things. One, that these digestive enzymes follow this secretory pathway where they go to the ER, the Golgi, and then secretion. And then another interesting thing that it pointed out was that as proteins move from one organelle to another, they don't simply just float around and bounce around through the cytosol, but they are packaged into vesicles each time. So every time you move from the ER to the Golgi, and then from Golgi to secretion, you have to be packaged into these coated vesicles. And again, later on, we're going to look at how those coated vesicles get made and how they're made. Okay? So that's the pulse chase.